few years ago, after driving the new Mercedes Maybach S600, we joked, with a kind of sanguine hope, that the next Maybach branded vehicle would be an extended wheelbase, G65, Land Allet. The recent release of the stretched, blown, recumbently seated, half convertible G650 proved that we weren't far off. This either demonstrates our preternatural psychic powers, or the eminent predictability of the contemporary global super rich, they want to be ruthless, rested, and topless. The arrival of the E Class Cabrio, which has a much more moderate if still exclusive ish price point, is similarly predictable, if positioned quite differently. It exists to fill in Mercedes 3x3 car lineup, giving Benz a sedan, coupe, and convertible in each of three sizes, C, E, and S. Things were far less predictable 25 years ago when Mercedes took a risk and chopped the top off the indefatigable and sublimely angular W124 coupe. At that time, in the early 90s, the convertible market was considered moribund, the victim of new safety rollover regulations and the incipient threat of a soft top ban in the US. The three-pointed stars lineup of retractable roofs had dwindled to one, the SL Roadster. We are now in a golden age of Benz convertibles. Would you believe it if we told you that the brand makes seven? In addition to the aforementioned C, E, S, and Lunatic G, there's the SLC SL, and GT. This is more than any other contemporary manufacturer by a wide margin. Why? Well, as the brand's head of product planning told us, because people love them. People reward themselves with a convertible. And the Mercedes-Benz brand exists firmly in the reward paradigm. The car is suitably rewarding, and excels especially in being precisely what an E-Class convertible should be. This means not quite as sporty as its smaller brother the C-Class Cabrio and not quite as stately as its older brother the S-Class Cabrio. To wit, every other Benz convertible can be had with an AMG motor, either for blistering performance or sheer profligacy, or both. Not so the E. It is the middle child, the bridge, stolid, dignified, and splendid without ever being aggressive. It aims to please without disrupting. It's a peacemaker. The adjustable suspension has three settings. Not surprisingly, neither the Touchy Sport Plus nor the Pliant Comfort is ideal for this car. It prefers the middle option, which is called Sport, but might as well be called Proper. Of course, it is not like the dancers at some methy rural strip club, topless and toothless. Equipped solely with a twin-turbocharged 329-horsepower 3.0-liter V6, as well as a 9-speed automatic transmission, and available with or without Mercedes's 4-matic all-wheel drive system, it has plenty of giddy-up. More than enough, in fact, to conquer the twisty and vertiginous alpine terrain in which we tested it out skirting the entwined borders of Switzerland, Italy, and France. It did, however, require more than its own power to make its way up to a stark, 4,000-meter viewing platform just beside it. <laughs>